welcome to this week's episode of Trouble in Winterhold. We are about 45 minutes behind what we normally would schedule, but we had some things to discuss that was off camera. So for those of you that are joining us on camera, we appreciate you tuning in. When we last left our group of intrepid and explorers, adventurers, they had just defeated a very nasty drider. Very, very nasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, somebody was in a tomb rifling through some coins. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Who would that be? Oh, <laughs> weird. Just rifling. Somebody came out with a We had a, uh, <laughs> a tiefling who was uh, <laughs> laying on the ground twitching. For a minute, yeah. Why do I always get a dragon ball and slip on the steps? Yeah, you did, didn't you? You didn't take my one. Bubba, get over here, boy. He said, not only do I not want you, but I'm going to be in your space. Bubba. He said, y'all just watched it happen. He's so much bigger than me. Bubba, seriously. Theater of the Mind versus uh, what we had on the uh, on the map last time. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, the Dryder was killed fairly close to where Ronnie was, where you were. Um, then we also had two bodies of the guards in various state of decomposure, mm -hmm. as well as a few other things. Um, so Ronnie. Yes. You come to, at the conclusion of the battle, mm -hmm. um, next to you is the body of the driver. Okay. Of all things, yeah. Can I look around on his body and see what <laughs> he's got anything of? Absolutely. Nope. So, the arm next to you. Uh-huh. Has a armband, okay, like a spider, okay, okay, kind of cool. The armband, the arm near you, has a bracer that is spider webby. Okay. Okay. Do you want to remove them from the body? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you touch the spider, it animates, runs up your arm. Bite you. Of course it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remove three hit points permanently. But you're now attuned oh. to this item. Do I know? Do I have any? Other Absolutely. One I do? Okay. I will give up three hit points for that. Man's <laughs> <laughs> so it goes up, sticks its fangs into you. By doing so, it transfers a bit of the blood and, of course, causes your, your attunement to this magic item. Okay. Um, it does withdraw its fangs, by the way. Okay. Good. But it doesn't Good. look like that thing's going to come off anytime soon. Okay. Just saying. Um, but you know that you have the ability through this device to cast darkness uh, three times a day. Three times a day. Okay. Resets in the morning. Okay. Or at midnight, I should say. Okay. And fairy fire three times a day. Ooh. And darkness fairy fire and is that spell anchor? Huh? It's a spell it's anchor. It's a spell anchor. Oh, nice. Dude. I have a spell anchor. Hey, so give it to me. <laughs> you ain't got no spells? Eldritch uh, Knight. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, what do you <laughs> uh, I don't want to tell you all that because you all don't know that I have that. Let's say if you have an extra. Okay. I'll try I get hit a lot. I'm not like I'm legit. Right. So I'm not gonna tell you. You sort you sort of see this, this happening, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey! But when you had touched the armband, it actually sticks to your hand. Okay. Mm. And it doesn't look like it's gonna come off anytime soon unless you slap it on your arm. Okay. So once again, <laughs> you get this. St 
sticky feeling as this um, bracer now attunes to you, and it is a bracer of plus one protection. Not just armor class, but also saving throws. Cool. Wow. wow. Why couldn't have I have gotten that <laughs> arm? No, actually, I like the one I got. Uh, oh, well, no. Okay. It's going to be hard to conceal the big giant sword that you got, Sylv. <laughs> Just as happy to sell it. Oh, I think I'll keep that bit. So. <laughs> don't, don't real owe you a favor. I have the oil. Oh. <laughs> of the items that were in the tomb area that you were attempting to rifle through before uh, the drider was killed, mm -hmm. you were able to gather. Well, I'm going to give you the total. Half of which you were able to gather without anybody else's watching. Okay. The other half, everybody was, was seeing what you got. So okay. Let me give you the total, and then I'll let you just divide it by two okay. and let you take that. 171 gold, 342 silver pieces, 188 copper pieces. The great sword. Once all the identifiers and everything else is done, it's a plus one great sword. It's kind of cool. It's got the cross guard as made out of curved white bone. It's a broad double-edged blade, and the handle is wound with a coarse red leather. Other than that, nothing else special about the great sword, other than the fact that it may have some kind of history, stuff along that lines. Um, on... The, one of the guards. Hey, come on in. Pull up a seat if you want. You just watching. Okay. Um, if you have questions about the battle interactive that I scheduled, that I invited you to later on this year. Yes, I saw that. Okay. Then we have to do that off camera because there's some things I cannot divulge on camera right now until. But. It's going to be really cool, and I'd like you to. I will try to hear. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, on one of the guards, there is a plain silver band, and it looks like it was a wedding band for him. It's only worth about two silver pieces, but engraved on it, um, Rowan and Daisy for all eternity. On the other guard <laughs> was a fine chain, gold, with a small medallion of Lathander on it. It's worth about ten. Real beautiful. And if you want to belabor the point, I can tell you more about how dusty and dirty the tomb is. Other than that, we're we got all the pertinence. Do what, the, what spells I can anchor to? Is it just all spells that I can anchor to? Cool. Okay. What was the names on the wedding band again? Rowan and Daisy. Rowan and, and Daisy, yeah. With no ill effects. That I know, okay, that I know of. No ill effects. And you're attuned to it. Okay. So you should know, right? Yeah. Well... Captain Evil Laugh is going to be happy about that, but we'll find out. Whoa, really? Is he eating my dog food again? <laughs> <laughs> Your dog will eat ours. Oh, I guess yeah. we'll just have no, to switch. It's, so. it's fine. Um, That's why I brought extra, because I need to know what will be in it. So with everybody seem to be writing stuff down, all that, um, Aaron, you were able to find a scroll near one of the sarcophagi mm -hmm. that as of yet you cannot identify unless you're going to do a comprehend languages. 
If that's the guy I have, I comprehend all of this. You, you do not? No, I don't have the spell. Okay, well then, not, it, so unless you want to share it with somebody, then... Yeah. The spell identify wouldn't do anything? If it's magical. Hmm. I didn't say it was magical. Yeah. Okay. We'll just run a little bit. I'll wait till I get to town then to find someone that can comprehend it. You're able to retrieve... You're able to retrieve five plus one arrows that came wow. from, that came from the drider. Cool. Mostly out of your chest. <laughs> there was there was one. It made this cool sound though when it came out. Hey, wait, do I know what language it's in, or nope. do I just nothing? Okay. Yeah. It's not familiar to you at all. Don't think too hard about it. I'm thinking. Don't think too hard about it. <laughs> also trying to remember the, the layout of the tomb. <laughs> Let me show you a picture. I mean, it's nothing. There's nothing to it really. I mean, I, I would assume that you go through the the general procedures of looking yeah, for secret doors, secret rooms, yeah. all that, you know. And basically, I'm I'm narrowing it down, cutting down to the highlights. What is it? I mean, is there anywhere that he, did he just live here, did it look like, or did or did he come from somewhere, the driver? So he came from the back of the of the area, and that was just his little area. Just his little area, okay. Yep. If you had a guess, he's been using this as his shelter, and he would go out and hunt and okay. do different stuff. Unless food comes to him. Right, which was us. Yeah. No, we're we're supposed to be on our way to what was the town? Winterhold. 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 Yeah, the name of the now, campaign. <laughs> you're about five hours away, except for the fact that there's a blizzard going on outside. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that the two guards are, are from, from Winterhold. Winterhold. Matter of fact, he he knows them. Oh, okay. Would it be you a know? good idea to, to do they have cloaks or something for proof? Yeah, that well, you can bring the ring like for sure. I'm not sure if you want to try to. I don't think it's a good idea. Do I know who Rowan is? Yeah, walk in to Daisy. Yeah, I mean, so you know of them, not necessarily particularly, you know. Um, also, Two Axe is the captain of the guard. Is one of your drinking buddies. Um, these are some of the some of the guards that came from Winterhold. Um, you don't necessarily know who the priest was, and and uh, but you you seen the face, but you don't know the name, per se, um, but you know Rowan. So I think, if I wouldn't mind, can I hold on to that ring? Because I know this guy, and I'd just like to take it back to his wife. Okay. <laughs> I, think I mean, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be untoward once the, the, the storm's over to be able to maybe take the bodies up to the town and then have them at their leisure being able to bring them up to Winterhold. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, just for a proper... Well, yeah, don't, I don't think I'd leave them there. Yeah, I'd prefer not to if we got placed, you know, somewhere on the wagon or wherever we can put them. Not necessarily with you, but you probably, like I said, if you, you... Well, you might be able to. So, we can discuss that as we go along. Are you, are you, did you eat at all? Back. Really close. He walked up looking lips too. Looked, he waddled up, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> and I know something about waddling, so anyway. What? I'm just laughing. What? Oh, you're laughing at me. <laughs> no. Oh. I, don't, I don't know what I'm laughing at anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was asleep. What? <laughs> so, um, I, a little bit of a side note. I feel the need to recognize uh, an interaction I had with a player this week uh, in, a, in a good way because it's something I have talked about with other players before and I, and I want to highlight it to make sure this this continues so I get a text message from Aaron who is wanting a spell a bit more of an obscure spell that you wouldn't necessarily find matter of fact it, it's not even in any of your books or any of that stuff it comes from a module that was printed out called the uh, Lab, lost laboratory qualish or something yeah. like that. Mm. Um, 
And anyway, it's an uh, interesting spell. I won't go into all the details of it, except for the fact that uh, it provides him a little bit, maybe a, a, some shelter. I'll put it that way. And I asked, I've told you all before, it's your job to sell it to me. If you want to do something that's a little out of the ordinary, you need to tell me why you need to do it. So I basically asked him, how would you have come across this spell? Why would you have been looking at this spell? And why why should I let you include it? And you know what he said? Uh, and for those of you that are watching that are under 14, I'm going to say the F word. Just giving you a heads up. Because I'm tired of sleeping on the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a quote, but it's pretty damn close. Um, and, and you know what? It, it was the perfect response, Aaron. The perfect response because it it tells me that you're not just playing a character. You are the character, if that makes any sense. And what was my immediate response to you as a result of that? Was, then sure, you, you convinced me. <laughs> you convinced me. And, and you got it. And so... Um, I want to showcase that because that was exactly the type of, of response that I look when I'm interacting with people and you want to do something, sell it to me a little bit, you know, make it to where, hey, I put some thought into this other than the fact that I got this cool spell, I want to give it a shot. And uh, so kudos to you for that. And you will start off the game with the thing of inspiration. Oh, yeah. So thank you. So once again, you know, for those of you that are thinking about your characters, and it can be sometimes just that simple. He's tired of sleeping on the ground. My character is tired of being exhausted. I'm tired of having a hard time concentrating uh, and stuff along that lines. So he took a spell that's going to allow him to, at least him, <laughs> maybe some others, I don't know, we'll see, um, to be able to maybe overcome some of that. Yeah. And so that's just, and that really is the perfect way I want you, when you're playing your character, when you're thinking of in terms of how did my character, how does my character operate, that was spot on. So kudos for that. All right, so now what? Do we have any maintenance or upkeep that needs to be done before we can fast forward, I guess? Or do you want to? Are we needing to sleep here tonight? Or? Um, or I'll... Fast forward, fast forward. No, not revive. We can... Yes, you will need to sleep somewhere. This is a better place than than the other than any other at this point. Um, so we we can we can fast forward if you want to. I will tell you that you oh, go ahead. Go ahead with hers. You had some inspiration in your head. Okay. Not that type of inspiration. Dang. Um, <laughs> but um, if you can make a type of metal gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And get a mage hand permanently cast on it, then somebody can. I'm not nubby anymore. Mm. So you don't necessarily have to figure out how they will operate necessarily independently. It's essentially a gauntlet with a ghost hand. Yes. Okay. Kind of interesting. Just a thought, or at least that's the direction that your thought was going. Okay. Do you think? No, she doesn't. I'm a woman. Sorry. No, no. We, I wasn't even gonna touch that. I was just gonna say blonde. But anyway, I'm sure no. Do you think that to get that to work? No, no, there's a computer. But no, um, that you'd have to chop his hand off. And if you do, can we watch? May I do? Wait, wait, I. <laughs> <She's everything. laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, amputation isn't new for the group. If it's That's required true. to get fingers <laughs> operational, I'm not opposed I to I carried you on the back of a horse for days to get to here. Don't you dare start that. And I was amputated, so... I didn't control that. She can't control that? I just want to cut your hand off. I Do you want it. to be able to use your other <laughs> magic spells? I'm already <laughs> sleeping up in the snow without you guys. And think about, about it. Think about it. Wait, why are you sleeping in the snow? Because I have yeah. a dome put up around me to hold the horses, remember? So we didn't, didn't come, come back out? Oh, no. He, no. he didn't come out. He didn't come out. Damn. No, no the flag like, was put up for him. Are the stairs yeah. destroyed? <laughs> no, just no. I'm up in the snowstorm with a dome protecting if me. If he lets the dome go down. And the horses go down. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I'm saying like, I was in the dome before. You, yeah, you, you were in. You were 
face first on the stairs after. Yeah, but did I destroy the stairs in the process? No, you can so get back, back up. up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. But there was <laughs> snow already on the ground. Uh, There's a dome that doesn't make the snow go away. It just, just makes everything else around the snow warm. Yeah, so eventually it's just I'm laying in mud. We got Perry. And, and horse poop. Yeah. That's all right. Mm-hmm. So, so, yes, all right, where, where was your... I was going to ask, can I actually use the spell so I'm not sleeping in the dome instead? To the one that I got approval for? What are the spell components? A, I think it's just a small piece of either stone or wood. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. Make are sure. you going to dispel Leoman's tiny hut to do the other one? It's a range of 30 feet, so I can cast it from the edge of the dome. I thought you had to concentrate on Liam's tiny, or is it just a tiny It's just there. It's okay. Just there. It's not right. a do you want to give it a shot? Yes, I do. Can you cast it from inside Liam's tiny hut? I don't see anything Liam's tiny hut allows things to go out, but not in. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a shot. It, it's up to you. Uh, you're cold, you're wet, you're uncomfortable, you're casting this spell for the first time. I think there's a 25% of spell failure with your fingers. I have both hands, to be fair, but... Yeah, you, you, no, well, fingers. I, fingers. <laughs> but if you're not holding your sword... Okay, I, I, this make it 20%. Okay. So I give you 5% on that. That's a good one. All right. So, so you pierce. Bottom five. 20 fail. Bottom 20 fail. Okay. 55. 55. Nice. That's okay. Oh, so especially... So I don't know if... if People coming and going, but all of a sudden, where there was <laughs> nothing before, there is this nice little tower now. A 20-foot tall tower made of stone. So, like, we go upstairs after <coughs> fighting our way through these little, like, tunnels to clear out space for our uh, <laughs> comrade. And he's in his sauna, hot tub. And he is in a <laughs> sauna. So the, I didn't build the sauna this time. This time, this yeah. Time. You, the bottom, there's so two the floors. Can be bottom floor is to hold the horses. Nice. Okay. And then, because it's just a ladder to a hatch, the top floor is just a bedroom. Now you can, with, with the layman's tiny hut, you can still leave the horses in there. If I leave the dome, it just disappears. It okay, gotcha. Okay. So, okay. bottom floor is just an right. empty That's room right. for the horses. Because okay. the tower, once it disappears, it's just going to be a pile of shit on the ground at that point. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm staying up, because the bedroom, it has just, like a, there's a bed, just a nice couch, a fireplace going. I'm just... I'm living it out here. Well, in the tower, not yeah. out there. You are not. You're out probably there. <laughs> gonna take your clothes and dry them out and do all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, cool. Cool beans. I'm living life right now. So, are you taking the horses in? Yeah. The bottom floor of the tower is horses. Top floor is me. Have we actually exited the tomb yet? I haven't. I'm just I, I haven't yet. I'm assuming well, I'm tending I, I, to his wounds. We can just say that, that again, if we're going to fast forward time, I, I'm going to assume that people have gone up and back okay. and, How much and are video? discussing what okay. may or may not be seen and okay. who's doing what. Right, so. Yes, um, but no. <laughs> I do know Ewok said he was going to come up there with me. Yeah. So me and him are in the tower. I so in this time, before. I assume that we've gone up there, at which point... Dorn being Dorn is going to look at you and say, you could have done this earlier. I couldn't. I figured it out while and studying. And then we okay. almost we died fighting the thing down there. <clears throat> I figured it out after you guys were down there and I was up here studying. Good to know. I can do it now. Good to know. But could not do it before. Otherwise, I would have just put that up to begin with instead of walking for another extra two hours in the snow. Hmm. Mm. You poor thing. You don't say. You were in the snow the whole time. You poor thing. <laughs> you guys got to sleep at least de- like out of the weather. I was laying in mud. We just got out of the thing from Well, that's fighting. your fault. <laughs> we didn't sleep in so about Wait, is this the night? Is this um, the night or the morning? You tell me. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I thought we hadn't slept yet. Well, I'm just saying, is it? I, I, would, I would assume that there's some coming and going, yeah. so you could oh, have okay. this discussion be because he may not even have answered the door. It's true. Oh, yeah, true. That night, I probably would just like. So you slept without coming to get us. I just probably I, don't know, I didn't think that far ahead mm. yet. Oh, so this is was so that considered was a long rest then? For him. Yeah, for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're sleeping on the ground, on the stone, on on in in you know, and basically a mausoleum. With, 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 with say, you guys two levels of exhaustion. Two levels of exhaustion. If you guys at and some you point... He got a long rest, so he's down at one level. Rest, you 
decided to be warm and comfortable <laughs> in your little no 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 in your tower I'm that you cast and let us yeah. except for Elok of course Bob are you so spoiled you little you let us sit sleep in a in a cold muslin don't talk <laughs> <laughs> without coming to get us did you ever come up to check on me because if you come up we were check, fighting a drider exactly and I'm yes out in the you snowstorm. stayed up here. In the we fought the driver, and we appreciate you watching after the horses, uh -huh. okay? But you could have at least marched your happy self down here and got us and told us to come up and sleep in your tower so we get a, a nice rest. I got a question. I let him in because he came up and checked on me. Did your plan hey, was, why would you come get us? Why didn't you follow me? <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> when you see a giant-ass tower appear out of nowhere, you come down and you say... Hey, there's a tower. Come rest. My guy, you see me leave. <laughs> and never go <come laughs> back. You said you were going to watch the horses with me. And never came back. Did you not care you about the horses? You got us. Did you not care no, 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 about no. the horses? Because Did you, you not care about us? to watch the horses. No. Wow. You are capable so of watching the horses. So you're telling me you can't climb stairs. I'm telling you that we... <laughs> you never once came to check on us. If you come you up guys. and seen the tower, I would have let you in. I mean, I was gone for a long time. You didn't yeah. think to come well, check on me. Well, this is terrible. He's going to start working on a gauntlet for him. <laughs> terrible. The I think someone. everybody is in the wrong here. I feel like it's I, one of those you situations you had to where... Over the chest. Yeah, there you go. Except for me. <laughs> they, they didn't come down and get us, yes. But we also did not go up and check on us. We're in the, they were in the an impenetrable hut. With yes, the horses, still. nothing can get in. Yeah, but it was also covering the door, so nothing could get to you either. Yeah, so why didn't you think of, hey, maybe let me go check out the door? Wait, you the door. That's what I did, was I set up in front of the door. Oh. Whatever. You, you can make excuses for, for it. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying, man. Okay. That's all I'm going to say to him. Someone doesn't want to be invited next time. Goodness gracious, close the door, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sylv, did you do math and figure out what no, they good. saw you? Yeah, nobody said anything. That's Elok, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Listen, that's not a rogue. <laughs> no. Oh, yep. I'll be a rogue for the Battle Interactive. Nice and Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> what is that 18 on the class warfighter doing in the corner? <laughs> not dying. <laughs> So, uh, y'all were able to build a little bit of a fire. You were able to, you know, not you. Take the, <laughs> take the two no, winter hold well, cars, set them off to the side, um, you know, and, and try to clean up and rest as much as possible. Um, I would assume that uh, on the uh, trips so far that. Um, They've been pegging you with some questions, and as you, <laughs> and I'm talking about uh, Brian's character. Sorry, not sorry. Um, yeah, if we lose a leg, then we can peg somebody. <laughs> but um, so they've been, you know, trying to ask you a little bit here and there, and as you get closer to Winterhold, you, you're like, you know, this, you know, you, you're able to give them a bit more information about Winterhold in, in particular. Um, and there's stuff that, I mean, it's just a town like any other town. Um, you got the, a lot of mining activity going on, but it's it's been around for a bit of, a bit of time, you know. You're not from Winterhold originally, um, but as a result of the archaeology different stuff going on. Um, your brother was attracted there, and you just kind of always kind of followed your brother a bit, you know? That's sort of how you got in the area. You don't really care, you know? Um, but you've made a, quite a bit of a home from Winterhold, and it's kind of nice. Um, your best bud of all, Osel Tuax, without a doubt. Uh, probably because he's straightforward kind of guy, you know? Uh, and that's... I guess that's basically what you're telling the, the group as well, too, is that he speaks his mind. He means what he says. He says what he means. You know, he speaks it, and, and uh, um, but doesn't do a whole lot of his pleasantries. Um, so, um, Winterhold is run 
by the Council of Five. Of the Council of Five, also two acts is part of that. Um, but you also have a, a couple of others. Yeah, you're going to take notes. Right? Um, yeah. You can. I mean, yeah. Okay. So they're they're going to be eligible. To no, no, I'm just, no, yeah. I just asked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That way I speak slow oh, enough. Oh, no, you're basically. fine. Yeah. Um, you got Edna. Yeah, she's an older dwarf. Always dresses real nice, though. Long gray robes and uh, long sleeves, but she's got this white hair. Um, good listener, well composed, um, also well spoken. She is the head of the Department of Archaeology, Mining, and History, and one of the five, so. You don't want me to give you their last names, do you? Mm. I, mean, I can't. If I mean, if it's, it's, if it's I, I think we can just go with Edna. Okay. You got Tharl. He's more of a diplomat. They say he's the negotiator of uh, foreign affairs. He's a gnome. Short, red hair. He likes to wear a blue jacket. And he's got a silver pin in the shape of a feather quill. But he's got to have burgundy trousers. And because he's so short, he likes to wear big boots. Because <laughs> he's a gnome. And he's redheaded. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. hey. But that's Tharl. Mm-hmm. Diplomat. Tharl or Tharl? Tharl. Tharl. You can just call him Carl if you want to. Carl. 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 Kethra is the, ma- is the master of trade. Who? Kethra. With a C or a K? K. Kind of slender female in her 30s. Brown hair. Usually keeps it in a braid. Human? Yes. So she almost always wears a tailored shirt. It's part of the trade with the waistcoat, which is what we call it best. Sort of like. Um, uh, and court shoes. To show off that they actually have the kind of money for that, you know. Um, her last name is Dyer. D Y E R. And the reason why that's important is because that's the family that is some of the town's richest merchants. Hence why they put her in charge of trade. Then you got Ulfric. Mm. Our Ulfric. He's the head of magic and sorcery. Dwarf. Male. He keeps his beard trimmed. So it doesn't get in the way. Usually has silver clips in it. Unusually tall. He likes wearing a wine red robe. That way it doesn't show off any spills. <laughs> when you say unusually tall, how tall is he for a dwarf? Well, what size dwarfs, how, what's the size of most dwarfs that you know? Uh, four feet. Four feet. About four and a half usually. Yeah. He's closer to five. Oh, wow, five okay. feet. You're a dwarf. That was my character. <laughs> <laughs> Um, his w- red robe, so it's it's wine red, so it doesn't show off any wine stains, but it does have scroll work and spirally patterns and all silver mm-hmm. and different stuff on it and everything else. So. Wow. Um, now, Osel Tuax, again, the head of... Um, you say Olser? Olsel. Uh, O-S-I-L. O-S-I-L. Osel. Osel. Uh, so he's about mid age, dwarf, um, black, really, really black hair. Um, and he's more utilitarian, so his beard and, and hair and everything else is done by wooden. 
class, mm -hmm. whereas the, the magician did the more silver. Oh, what's silver this guy's name? Osul. Osul. Osul, two packs. Yes. Don't forget him. Oh, that's your, yeah. That's, that's my buddy. buddy. That's, that's your buddy. buddy. So, um. My bestest buddy. <laughs> our drunken master will describe him as he always scowls. And he's got a hot temper. But he's very generous, and he likes to laugh, and he laughs easily. But he also is a very serious man. Always, never seems to want to get to upgrade. He's got old battered scale mail, and that's what he wears, and damn it, you just like it or not. <laughs> Big old mace. An old rough woolen cloak. That's his thing, you know. Um, I'm so sorry, I missed this. What's he uh, over... What's his? What, he's a dwarf. No, I mean, what's he? Like, oh, he's the he's the head of the guards. Head of the guards. Yeah, Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see it again. Cool. So all everything he's told you was what things were like about six months ago when they originally left. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and actually a little bit more than six months ago because um, they were able to travel from Winterhold down to to Waterdeep fairly easily. That took about a month. To find what he was looking for um, at Waterdeep, and then slowly but surely, but make y'all been waking your way back. So probably at you know six six and a half months mm -hmm. since uh, he'd been gone. Um, and so it's a town like any other. Basically, they have their um, places that you can buy things left and right. Um, I guess. The best des description of Winterhold is basically Winterhold is built in a cave. Okay. A big cave on the side of a mountain. Okay. And as the city has expanded, it could expand inward, it expanded outward. <laughs> so you sort of come upon the city as you're coming into it, but the main heart of what some of the city is, is interior. And, and some of it is exterior as well, too. But obviously, where it's located at, when the winters hit, it can hit kind of hard. And so, yeah, winter hold, exactly. Um, but he talked about how the um, this is where he got his little bit of fear of horses. Uh, there was an incident of which he doesn't want to go into. Um, but you always have here the, the, the nickering and neighing of horses and the ringing of hammers. It's just, it's home, you know. Though I don't like horses. <laughs> that's about as far as you'll go on that. Um, that's it. That's what I got, basically. And it, obviously more that you told them, but nothing that necessarily needs to be brought up uh, for this particular time frame. So we all good? Mm -hmm. You've had a chance to chastise the sword mage and uh, blade singer for now, and uh, as he comes out very refreshed from the day. So, can I assume that when we go into the second day, because the blizzard hasn't let up really, that you may have discussed with him maybe alternative sleeping arrangements, or, yeah, or not? Yeah, I'll reconfigure the top of the tower instead of being a bedroom where he slept on the couch to just be like a lounge area with a bunch of places to sleep. By the way, the the, the night we stayed down there and he went up to chat us and you know, whatever, I wanted to stay down and kind of straighten everything in the tomb and pray for the bodies that was already buried there and everything. So, you know, the tomb's been, the, the main tomb has been empty for a while. Um, if you had to guess, you would say that the ghast had probably been eating whatever byproducts was left over from what the dryer had been pulling in. Mm -hmm. um, or very possible, like, Claire could have come by and found out about that and kept it going. But obviously this dryer was pretty rough because you see at least two dead. Don't know how many more else there were, but at least two dead of whatever guards were sent over to try to take care of the dryer. Now, have we cleared out the entire tomb? Because yes. Because we, I know there was a door that was closed that we didn't go into. 
Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I told you what was was what was pertinent. I mean, yeah. again, so. Um, and the writer is still down there, Greg. His body is. Yeah. His body is. If I remember right, it was shooting arrows. That's where you got so the five. That's where I got the five. Everything else broke. Was it shooting out of a bow or anything? It was. Was the bow broken? Nope. Just a long bow. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing special about it. it. Yep. It's money. Why says you're worth money? Mine breaks. Yeah. Nobody brought that up early, did we? <laughs> That's why he's grabbing it. <laughs> yeah, I was born in a day. It wasn't yesterday. <laughs> There's nothing much really going on. Yeah. Can I spend some time ritual casting identify or detect magic on the scroll to see if there is any magic to it? There is no magic on it. Okay. Um, so this takes about three days, by the way, for the blizzard to clear out. Um, one of the reasons why um, the drunken master I was talking about let's go to this place because he was thinking that the storm might last a little bit longer. When they when they hit, they have a tendency to hit the kind of hard snow accumulates. So even when the storm clears out, getting back on the road again might not be the easiest in the world. There's no snow plows in this area that helps clear out those roads, and so you sort of got to wait for. But we're still early enough in the season, so when the when the storm breaks, and you're able to actually go from there into the town a little bit. Uh, do some interaction. By the way, we're we're going to remove all levels of exhaustion since we are wow. staying. Nice. And, uh, hit points are back and everything. Huh? Hit points are back and everything. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would assume that y'all had done all the healing and everything else that you had available. Temporary hit points are gone by now, right? But yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I just realized since we're just staying, I could have made like multiple, like three different towers we were staying in. I wouldn't have, but I just realized that's an option. <laughs> my own castle for as long as I want to let you stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if you keep chastising me or not. Yeah. Otherwise, he'll make you breathe fire and catapult you. <laughs> you <will not. laughs> I have reduce. I'll do it. And then you got to <laughs> And then you got a pissed off I fireball, and I don't want to cast it inside a skull. <laughs> I Unless it's your skull. Then you got a then you got a pissed off uh, platypus who wants to know why you're taking his role. Right. <laughs> I think the platypus is okay with it not yeah, being yeah, yeah, no, no, it just <laughs> Okay. Um, so uh, if, if there's no problems, you want to fast forward? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Because you're only about five hours away, and you're able to come up. and. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, so you're able to go into town. You basically have to wait one more day. So it's been basically four days since you got there. Uh, things are starting to melt a little bit. The roads are going to be treacherous and everything else, but you're pretty certain that um, what would normally be five hours should only be double that to get over there. So if you get an early start, you should be able to. Would it speed things up at all? Because I have the cantrip fireball, just casting fireball on the snow as we go to clear it out in front of us. Possibly, but then what are you going to do with all the water that makes mud? Good point. You Unless probably you did it for like that. two minutes. It was like... It was like, <laughs> and that's not really what your master taught you either about how to use that type of magic. It's not just sense. It necessarily be used willy nilly. Does that make sense? Yeah. He would he would want you to be a little bit more reserved in, in how you use that. Now whether you choose to do that or not is different, but you do feel a good attachment to to your master that uh, that helped you out with that. So, ten hours later, frozen feet, cold, wet, weary you come out of the pine forest that was coming out through the road and basically, and then of course you consider, you see it across a small covered, frost covered uh, field. You got snow drifts and a few other things here and there. And then uh, the gates of Winterhold are up ahead. And yes, you are already hearing the ringing of the hammers. And <sighs> When you get to the curving stone wall that leads you to the entrance of Winterhold, 
you have these, for those of you that don't know Winterhold, and for those of you that do know Winterhold, I'll describe it again, but um, two low square guard towers on either side of the gate. Boy, they have lots of arrow slits. <laughs> these guys were not playing when they made this, okay? Um, you have guards walking around in chain mail and fur layers. And of course, a banner of bright blue and white that features the city's coat of arms. Two cross picked axes on a snowflake. Kind of cool. Uh, so uh, as you approach, the guards are, you know, which are pacing back and forth, come up. Um, they look to inquire as to the party, but then they see Bjorn uh, and his brother and welcome you back. And he said, you have been, you know, they've been expecting you. And uh, the five would like to see you soon. One thing that you're noticing for certain is that um, both the guards and um, the people that you're passing as you're going in, they've always been friendly, not standoffish or anything, but there is a guarded look to a lot of people now that you did not see six months ago. There has been some definitely something going on that has caused these people to be a little bit on edge. The guards don't look any more um, armed than usual, just a lot more alert. Um, and even the, the, but the people have got this weary look in your eyes. So having strangers coming to town, never been an issue. Okay. Having y'all come into town, it's not necessarily an issue. They're looking at you, but they also got this haunted look in their eyes as well. too. Um, all right. So you're able to come in. Um, Bjorn doesn't want to wait, wants to go right to see the five. Uh, it wouldn't be uncalled for it, since you've been on the road for about 10 hours to go and freshen up before if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, Bjorn's willing to let y'all go to y'all's place for a little bit as long as at least the majority of you are willing to go up to the Council of Five. Is there anybody that wants to hang out at Brian's house? I'd be interested in. I mean, after getting freshened up, I think I'd be interested in seeing the council of five. Okay. And then Brian's house. That's just. No, that's it, basically his house. Basically, okay. it's, right. it's so. You right. Um. You have a what? <laughs> <laughs> um. So what specifically needs to be done at Brian's house, or is it just a just an opportunity to freshen up? Just to freshen up. Okay. For those of you that have, I mean, so you, you've been on. You, being on the road for a while, usually you have a, you know, a couple of packs. You, you change out of your wet boots and put on some dry boots or try to, you know, dry your yeah. clothes and freshen up a little bit. For those of you that have access to the spell prestidigitation, can never say that right, um, can just go poof and all of a sudden you're spiffy again. Uh, and so that's part of that. Um, so, but the idea, I mean, he's not doing much to clean himself up. He's gathering a few things that he has at the house that he wants to take up I'm to the council. I'm a bird. I probably five. want to make myself look nice. I need to, like, preen myself. Well, at least you don't have wings right there. Mm -hmm. about. <laughs> it's a, it'll, happen, it'll just happen a lot faster now. I probably, like, whenever we finally get to, like, the house. Oh, put some lotion on those chicken legs of yours. <laughs> oh, they're ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh. Like we finally like get inside and I poof out like the feathers. I'm just comfortable and it's warm now. It's like, hmm. It was warm in the tower. Yeah, but it's better. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have like uh, somebody against me behind it, you know? Or not against me, like what's it called? Um, when somebody like turns on you. I can't think of the word. <laughs> you go, Bubba, tell me. I think you're Bubba's comfortable too. I think you're boring him. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just, He's just comfortable. <laughs> you woke him up. What would you do? Don't keep talking all this mess. Now I gotta get it. He's got it. He's looking at me Security like he wants me to hold him or something. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's gonna bother 
me until I remember what that word is. It's a basic word. To, like, stab somebody in the back. To, like... Betray? Betray! Yeah. It doesn't have betrayal behind it. <laughs> Does it smell of betrayal at Brian's house? Exactly. At Brian's house. So oh, you never about. came to check on me. When you guys came back up, I invited you in. Wow. You, you expected me to go just out to the all store. Stop. Out, guys. Stop talking and let's get cleaned up and go see the top. Everybody just clean up and I'll bring you in. Here. Calm down. <laughs> Slam Shut it. up and drink before we go see the diplomats. <laughs> <laughs> Customary. <laughs> okay, so um, the cobbled streets will lead into part of the town that's actually located inside the massive cave park, which you will find a three-story building called the Halls of Lore, and that's where your brother spends a lot of his time, by the way. Um, so, one of the reasons why uh, Bjorn didn't make more of an issue of just going right straight to the five, the big sign, not a small sign, big sign in the front door, no mud or snow on the floors. Open flames strictly forbidden. And it says literally scrawled underneath it. Yes, that includes fire based spells <laughs> on the sign that you're going in. I but never did it inside. Where to cast my... I never did it inside. I was in a field. Can't pull that on me. Yeah, it uh, it's skull. more like that. Inside of what? A skull. Yeah, not inside of a building <laughs> where it's important. So, uh, going inside the uh, Halls of Lore, inside is a old gnome who s looks at you squinting over the glasses that they're wearing. Um, looks at all y'all, looks like he's, he's, he's going to say something and then notices Bjorn. And then also notices you. And you've had run-ins with this one before when you've tried to go fetch your brother to occasionally come down and get something to eat or change or whatever whatever else. And while Bjorn is is well uh, brought in, you're not It's not Darl, is it? Huh? Is that Darl? No, that's not Darl. This is somebody else. We we'll, we'll call this guy Richard. Because <laughs> he's been known to be a dick. Just saying. Oh it's you. <laughs> well, you know where you're going. They're waiting for you. And you get up to a plain door. It's the Department of Archaeology, Mining, and History. you got kind of a long corridor. Uh, oil paintings on the walls depicting just various scenes. Um, the bookshelves don't look overly stable and filled with all kinds of different stuff uh, of various states of, of Composure and decomposure, uh, as the ages permit. Um, and uh, did everybody decide to come? Or is anybody staying behind? I think everybody went. Okay, yeah. good deal. Um, all right, so you're able to go into a meeting room. And you have... <laughs> no, you have, uh, I'm sorry, Osel and the other four that are in the room that were described. So Edna, Tharl, Kethra, Ulfric, and Osel. And when you come in, Osel looks up and scowls at the opening of the door, but then sees you and says, Well, it's about damn time. I'll run up to him and give him a hug, give him a head back. <laughs> he backs up and he goes, We needed you. I'm here now. Good, good. Come on in. So the council, who is, uh, they all seem to, ooh, Bjorn, yeah, oh yeah, his brother, okay. But, <laughs> you don't have a bad reputation. In a way, you just don't have the um, honor that Osel has done with his job. He's a bit more of a politician, even though he's rough around the edges. You... 
don't put up with any of their crap. And that's probably why you kind of rub some people around, you know, the rough, the rough way. Even though you're not bad, it's just, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, uh, some of these guys are... It's not a kiss mom. Well, yeah. yeah. To be honest, I was... I used to be a soldier. So that's probably... I didn't feel like I fit in after a while, so I mm-hmm. left. And I lost too many friends, so... I was going to ask if you took a arrow to the knee, but it's a scour joke, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh! Uh? <laughs> 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 uh, for those of you that don't get the reference, sorry, I'm not going to explain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you wearing your mask on your head? I don't know. He does it just because he's doing it five times, and I'm like, that's not how it's supposed to be worn. <laughs> That's not where the breath comes out. <laughs> so, also, it's going to go ahead and do the uh, introductions on his part, and then looks to you and looks to his, his, the party, basically. And even though Bjorn has always been, he's never really been the spokesperson, and also prefers to deal with you anyway. So, he's going to give you a chance to. And, and who who's accompanying you here? He's going to pull out his note cards. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Of course, this is CC. ZC. ZC. See, I'm, I get it wrong. I slur my it's words. Trans- it's not your fault. It's a you got a couple of flags. The last one. Orin's weird. <laughs> couple of flags. And this is Elok. Yeah. And Seal. The gold coins, the inspiration thing. It's at your choice. And this is Lucan. I, this is Dorn. Don't worry about it. I mean,. Remember the, the thing we talked about, they can buy inspiration for players? Okay. He said it's your choice. Oh, He nice. bought one and said it's your choice. Oh, very, oh. So who did that? Uh, Kintro. Oh. Oh. oh, thank you. Yeah. This oh, is that's right. Yeah. You can just say that. Oh, okay. Next, okay. Yeah, next, that's okay. fine. Sorry. That's, that's great. No, no. For those of you that are watching on, on Twitch and, and uh, giving to the cause, thank you very much. And I will try to use it uh, at the appropriate time in the appropriate way. Maybe even to give inspiration to a bad guy. Ooh. There, oh, you, yeah, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, you told me okay. give Sorry, Brian. Go ahead yeah. with your character. Sorry, you were. He can do whatever he wants. This is Dean's choice. Elok, Seal, and Dorn, and uh, Lucan. Right. Welcome. Welcome indeed. My brother in arms, we have been beset you, since you have left by drow elves. Um, and you can definitely now you take a look at sort of the five and you you I'm, not that I'm not I'm not talking to you but Osul's t- directing he knows attention it. to you and now you're realizing that the five the five it's kind of grim in there. Um, so over the last couple of months, they started getting it attacked by drow elves, and at first it was you know. Uh, a raid here and a raid there. They were stealing some goods. Some people would end up getting killed. Some people would end up getting missing. We're not exactly sure what has happened with them. But over the last couple weeks, they have raided almost every night. We are low on supplies. They're taking people and we can't seem to stop them. They seem to know where every one of our weaknesses is, are and are able to exploit it. Um, the attacks happen very quickly. They're very deadly. If you, you know, we, you know, we've dealt with draw before, but not like this. Uh, they, they pop up. They're sudden. They're merciless. Um, some of the guards are end up dead. Some end up injured. Um, and then we got people and property coming up missing. Um, I'm stretched thin, very thin. And the more thin I get, the bolder the enemies are. Um, I, just, I just can't get the feel. I get this feeling they just seem to know where all of our plans are. Anytime we make some type of overture to stop them, they seem to know what's going on. Ulfric, who is the head of magic, the neatly trimmed guy in the beard and all that good stuff, and he's like, yeah, if, the, if 
they do know our plans. I'd like to know where they're getting this information from. That's for sure. Maybe some of your guards are helping out. Maybe they've been looking at our papers and are just sort of talking out of hand. And you were waiting for it, because as soon as he said that, you were like, <laughs> and you see Osel's face, and boy, it gets dark. I just give him the evil eye. Are you questioning my men? And it was very done like that. <laughs> and the master of trade, Kethra, goes, calm down. We Everybody knows that dark elves are excellent spies. Everybody knows that. And he said, well, also says that, well, they seem to certainly have eyes everywhere. That's for sure. So as you can tell, we're in a tight spot. And to be honest, we uh, ran into a drider on the way here and almost didn't make it here. The drider? Was it at that old? It was at the... The old sanctum? Yes. Oh. Did you ever to kill it? Yes. Oh, thank, thank, the, thank the gods. Um, we we sent a squad of eight down there that we couldn't actually afford to send because they were terrorizing the town over there so much. And uh, only three came back. Did you, have, did you find anybody? Yes. We, did we bring, were we able to bring the bodies back? Sure. Bring back. We brought back the bodies, and uh, I hold out the ring. Oh no, Daisy's going to be heartbroken. And I said I'd like to give this to her. Yeah, we'll we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Um. Y'all come at a real appropriate time. Would you be willing to help us out? with some of our drow problems while you're here. What specifically do you need done? <sighs> we have narrowed down a bridge. A lot of the pathways that the drow are taking seem to converge on this bridge. Um, right. they, when they get to the other side of the bridge, they branch out again. Thinking about maybe setting an ambush. Would y'all be willing to set an ambush and see if we can catch these eyes either coming or going? Well. <laughs> so. I can't speak for the whole party, but I'll be there. I mean, we know they're raiding almost every night. If we can manage to to surprise them and give them a little bit of cause for pause, it gives us a chance to maybe bolster our defenses a little bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, we have to stay here anyways, and they're raiding every night. Exactly. I'll just die in my bed. Is there anybody else in the room, or is it just the five and us? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, I'd be on My, my concern is that there's possible leak somewhere. So if it leaks out that we're getting there now, yeah. that narrows down your leak by a lot. Yeah. So that would be my suggestion, is keeping it close-knit. No, I trust my drinking buddy. If he trusts y'all, then we're good to go. You say there are people coming up missing. As well as, I figure, there are Right now, we've, had, we've, we've, you know, had, we've had about uh, three score taken. Not counting just killed, but taken. I don't know what's happened to them. So, here's the deal. If you can ambush these guys, maybe find a way of either ambushing them or tracking them to their lair of where they're 
I don't, I think they're just staging somewhere nearby. I, we know of no drow settlement that is really close. We know of none of that going on. We've had raids and stuff before. They almost always stage themselves somewhere and hide out during the daytime because they don't do do so well during the daytime. So... Uh, just side, sort of a side note, y'all are discussing this. Uh, you also have other conversations going on. Um, Edna is interested in, so Bjorn, what'd you find out? Okay. Um, so some of the things that Bjorn had grabbed from his, your, your, y'all's house, basically, is, um, some of the paperwork he had been talking about, he'd been wanting for, for quite some time, and he was able to to verify. You okay? Okay. Um, so there was a queen, ancient dwarven queen. All this was written in ancient dwarvish that he had not, um, that had come from a previous uh, eon. And over time, the languages have changed enough to where he was having dof- difficulties. Um, and her name was Freya. And she was the last ruler of the Iron Shield clan. And she used to control a large area around where Winterhold is now. Um, actually, Winterhold was, was around then as well, too. It was just in a different state than what it is now. Um, she coveted Winterhold and wanted to take it by force and yet could not figure out a way to do it. Being that it's, it's in a cave, a little bit easier to defend than some places would be. According to the paperwork, um, it looks like she made a pact with some drow elves and then the drow backstabbed her. Didn't follow through. So, anyway, he basically says, I started studying on my way here, obviously. I have not got the entire text translated yet. But I think I will be able to give you an overview of all the tunnels that are underneath Winterhold that may lead to where the drow are. Um, yes. Um, and of course, some of the council, like Kethra, she's like, you know, do you really think this is going to help? You know, this old, old thing. And, um, you know, what if it's more of a misleading than it is anything else? And, but also, like, listen, I think it's worth trying. That's what we sent them. You know, he had a hunch, and that's what you know sent him to Winterhold to begin with. I mean, to uh, to Waterdeep to begin with. Um. So, Edna, who seems to be pretty much the leader of the five, um, says she agrees with Oso. It's worth a shot. Now, this is interesting. She says, "We think that the Drow definitely have a plan. We just don't know what the plan is." Um, Have you noticed what they've been targeting? Well, it seems to be just goods, and they're taking people. Now, we know that Drow have a tendency of grabbing people for slaves, but the numbers that they're grabbing this time seems to be a little bit more. Um, again, we're at, we're at two score, or three score people, at 60, that have come up missing, not counting the ones that have been dead or, or wounded. Um, so... The dark elves that we have managed to kill, the guards are talking that they have died saying the name Shade Dreslin. And we have found out that she is their new high priestess. Shade Dreslin. 
what from what little bit we can get off of them before they end up passing on is that she is cruel, cunning, and very ambitious. Personally, I think that the kidnappings have to do with some, some wild scheme that she has got going on. Now, uh, so there, while the text that he went down to Waterdeep to get part of the text, some of the text they had found that even made reference to the text of Freya's, uh, the, the, the ancient dwarven queen, um, there was uh, there's other groups of people that are also looking for translations. One of them is Ian. Ian von Boulderstock. Um, and at the mention of Ian, you notice that your brother's like not impressed. You know him and Ian have a thing. Bjorn doesn't like Ian. Um, they used to be good friends, you know that, but that time frame, that one time that they found something important and Ian took all the credit for it, and ever since then his brother was like, Man. anyway, Ian um, is on an, a, an expedition where they're looking for some information at this point in time, we're also waiting information on him, the party, his party should have returned yesterday, and being that Ian doesn't like being late, mm, we're a little worried. So, are y'all in a position? You know, you've been on the road. I hate to impose on you, but would y'all be up for trying to set up a ambush tonight? I think we can. Do you want? Dead or do you want alive? This is a very important discernment. Alive, you can question them dead. So if you're, ca if you're catching them coming to us, kill them. If you're catching them returning, try to get any of the prisoners they may have, or at least follow them to where they're staging them. I would think with the with the goods and stuff that they're getting. They probably can't transport all this stuff all at once. They're probably having to stage it and, and take it in pieces. Plus, um, the directions and stuff that they're coming from means that they're also having to deal with some of the sunlight. And as we get closer to winter, you know, and it's not winter yet, but as we're getting closer to winter, daylight is uh, not as long as we would like it to be. sure we can stage something, be it sabotage and information detainment and whatnot. Um, just show us where we need to uh, be specifically um, and what to look out for, and I think we can take care of the rest. How long do we have before we need to head out to set up the ambush? Two weeks. Huh? No, because I'm going to call the session. <laughs> <laughs> no. What a say. Sorry. So, uh, I'm really struggling tonight. We're going to go ahead and, um, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up tonight. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried about actually being able to get home safely. Um, much I'll finish my energy break and all that other stuff, but... I know it wasn't a very long session tonight. Um, it's a good session, though. Well, I think we got a little bit of role play in. We got to winter hold, which is a big deal for me. Um, yeah, finally made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're well, actually. Like set up, cause yeah, then when we come, come back, back weeks, like it's all it's going there. Down. Yeah. 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 So you don't have to sit and kind of fuddle around, fuddle around, mm -hmm. and just roll the dice. Yeah, but this. Yeah. You hold on to that. Yeah, I was about to say. It was nice. You hold on to that, and uh, oh, I get one too, don't I? Yes, you do. Okay. So for those of you that are watching, uh, somebody donated 
what was it called? Uh, well, they, they just bought it by, wa- by watching they earn gold coins. Oh, so they spent they a thousand did. gold coins to give whoever you so want. So I'm going to turn the gold coin into a wooden coin be, yes. to, and I'll put inspiration <laughs> in my pocket to be used at a later time. So, But with, with, for tonight's session, we are just going to cut it. And again, I call it, I, I don't like canceling sessions because we don't, don't, you know, don't but I am... I'm struggling uh, with the new job and everybody mm-hmm. being sick and all that other good stuff. So um, we get it. Don't apologize. Yeah. Everybody there gets it. And this also gives me a chance to. I'm going to turn this camera around real quick. Oh sure. Hey, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's my big ugly face. All right. So we had a giveaway, uh, two giveaways actually, and if you subscribed, you got an entry, and if you no, I'm sorry, if you followed, you got an entry, and if you subscribed, you got two entries. Uh, so the very first uh, giveaway winner uh, actually is Anthony Suave, uh, Anthony Suave Com is his name on Twitch. He actually is the winner of two sets of dice from the frogandflute.com. Uh, please go to frogandflute.com and check out their stuff. It's really awesome. So, Anthony, you get these. He's in the stream a lot uh, with playing video games yeah, yeah, yeah. and D&D. And then Kentro Bridge Troll, you hey. actually win uh, the scroll rolling mat. And inside the rolling mat are two sets of dice from Frog and Flute. So all this has come, has come from the frogandflute.com. So, guys, I'm going to send you a whisper through Twitch, uh, get your information, and get your prizes out to you as soon as possible. Um, and with that... We are not getting off the air yet. We're not getting off the air yet. Okay, turn me back around. <laughs> So we had uh, a bit of session before we went live where we talked about uh, some planning of an event later on for this year. Um, For those of you out in the, uh, on the interwebs, I live in an RV and travel with my wife. And um, I love coming in and playing D&D with my family and friends whenever we're in town, but our heart is on the road right now while we still have the, uh, the means and, uh, and time to be able to do it. So with that in mind, our plan is to get on the road back again in August. But whenever we, I run, I like to end usually on a high note. This is the first session I think we haven't really ended on a real high peak. Um, but I like to end the sessions uh, on a high note. And so I have scheduled what's called a battle interactive. To those that do not know what a battle interactive is, it is also known as an epic adventure. And again, for those that maybe not know what that is, what we have, we are going to be inviting multiple people to come play D&D with us. This will be held July 31st of this year. We are going to have four tables running the same adventure at the same time, each with a DM per table, and I will be coordinating it all. The interesting thing about running with four tables with the same adventure is that at some point in time, the party will actually be able to interact with one another to the point where, if circumstances dictate, they will be able to change from one table to the other. Um, They will have a a purpose, a goal, and it's going to be very interesting. So the idea is going to be for us to live stream it with a camera per table. That way you may watch. Uh, if you if one table is not to your liking, you can switch over, hopefully, and watch one of the other tables as well. So more information about that coming. There's some things I would like to reveal, but I can't quite yet until we get a certain planning nailed down. But I wanted to share that with you because the opportunity, if you've never seen this, um, it is absolutely uh, a great thing. I've played in a few. Ronnie has played. Uh, Silva has played. Uh, Elok has played. Brian's played. Um, it is both exciting and exhausting at the same time. But it's going to be really, really cool. So stay tuned for more information as we come. Again, we'll, we'll keep talking about this probably every time we stream, um, at least for Trouble in Winter Hole, we will talk about the Battle Interactive. That will end our current story arc and run 
until I c come back from being on the road again, in which case we pick up and we go from there. So uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks.